Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome to another stream. Ashish, yeah, I can guide you. No problem. So, one great place to start learning ZBrush is to learn on Z Classroom, which is actually connected to the very YouTube you're watching now, so Pixelogic's YouTube channel. Um, and Kat's here. Um, it's a nice free way to learn. Uh, Michael Pavlovich's channel has a lot of tips and tricks, but it's a little bit more advanced if I had to, if I had to say something about it. So I would start with the classroom and go from there. Uh, when it comes to actual guidance on the sculpting side, uh, there are so many good artists that offer mentorships, coaching, uh, courses and things like that, myself included. Hi, Kens. How you doing today? So, let me get rid of the cat first. First, first to do on my to-do list. So I'm torn about what to work on today. Um, I can either actually my camera's a little bit. Hey, hey. Um, I can work on the project I'm currently trying to get done, which is the Gorgonops. I have it blocked out, maybe like primary forms, um, somewhat down. I'm gonna pull that up. I got sparkles. Como você está? Eu tô bem hoje. E você, Vitor? Chad, you have a ton of questions. About what? Can I learn ZBrush? How different is ZBrush? ZBrush is, is pretty unique in its UI. Um, but it's also extremely powerful and fun. And once you actually get over the hurdle of getting used to the shortcuts and, and how things work, it's actually going to unlock a lot of potential for you. So this is the project I've been working on, Little Gorgonops. It's just at the beginning. I've only been streaming it uh, little by little. Hello from Mexico, hello! Today's students are live. Trying to turn the sub tools into one mesh without losing detail. I have tried zero mesher and diner mesh. <laughs> diner mesh. Um, Alright. Actually, I was I was making a tic uh, not a TikTok, a tutorial on that, and it was supposed to come out last week. It's just, you know, snags were hit. Um, but basically, what you need to do, and I'm gonna give you an overview, but like keep in mind that this is going to come out on a tutorial soon, um, where I'll actually show you how to do it. Um, basically, if you combine them all and you dynamesh them, you get a dynamesh at a really high resolution so that you don't lose the details. But you can't use that for anything, right? Um, so, what you're gonna have to do is duplicate the mesh after it's been dynameshed, hide the original for now. Then uh, zero mesh it, retopologize it however you wish. Then you're going to turn both back on, and you're going to project from the the original Dynamesh one to the low poly one. Then you're going to divide it up, project again, divide it up, project again, like little by little, from the lowest subdivision to the highest subdivision. And what that will do is it will slowly rebuild subdivisions for you that have the same exact amount of um, detail, but it will be on a better um, Mesh. Been a problem with my UI. Give me a second. Wrong thing, anyway. Hmm. <sighs> 
Well, there's a problem in ZBrush. At some point in the making of the model, the symmetry was accidentally turned off. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's a, definitely a th something that happens to all of us. If you press X on the keyboard, you'll turn off and on symmetry. So you have to really be careful. I do that all the time. Uh, one way to fix it is to go to geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. And that will basically like cut your model down the middle, flip it, mirror it, I guess, and then um, merge them back together. It works well, but if it's off centered, then it will look a little weird. So you got to make sure that the center line is somewhat centered. Um, that's the main way. Yeah, so it's not visible to the eye, so it should be pretty easy to fix. Go to Geometry, Mirror, and Weld and see see how that looks. I get really confused after watching and learning from a few tutorials. How should I learn it the proper way? Uh, if you're, It seems that your problem is that you're getting a little bit of information overload and you're unsure about which one to follow. So what you're going to want to do is follow one single course, probably, if you have that kind of phenomenon going on. Um, because the one course will just teach you one way to do things and then you can build on that as opposed to like a bunch of learning a bunch of different kind of ways that fight each other. I haven't quite nailed the design yet that I wanted for this piece. You're doing YouTube on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to come out last week, but yeah, it should have. I am Ana Carolina. Why? Title's wrong again. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> this is definitely not a mech. <laughs> That. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it when you guys tell me the title is wrong. Because <laughs> I don't check that before the stream starts. Maybe I should start. Got some lumps right here that I accidentally added last stream. Move things a little. <laughs> okay, I'll get you my link. I'll just put my links in chat for you guys so that those of you who want to go see my tutorials on YouTube uh, can do so. Those of you who want to uh, reach out to me, talk to me. Those of you who want to get special help and mentorship from me as well, please feel free to. I've been doing this thing where I give out free workshops at the beginning of the every month for sculpting. So I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> just so many links. So many links. Oh my god. Link overload. I need to uh, cut down my links a little. Oh yeah, Chad, that's where you'll find my YouTube. I like Alessandri, Alessandri Medesh. Okay, so let's actually get into the streaming part 
of the stream, right? Like I've done some Q&A, we fixed some problems, and now I can tell you guys uh, a little bit about myself and my projects. So my name's Ana Carolina Pereira. I am from Brazil. I've been streaming fix Actually, uh, my streaming anniversary was last Wednesday. Um, so I've been streaming for four years, I think. Let's all take a moment to appreciate how long that is and how old I am. <laughs> Getting. Uh, you're working as a professor. Yes, I am. So, um, to continue my introduction, I've been streaming here for four years. I um, have always taken a very uh, interest, a very big interest in education. So lately, I've been a professor. Um, in a college called Wrangling College of Art and Design. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of that. I teach in game art and VR. I teach how to, uh, not to make it, not to put it simplistically, make games, do a little bit of the, of the like the programming side uh, of games, a little bit of the art side, some character stuff, but not a lot lately. Um, how to be a tech artist, how to optimize. Because before before teaching, I actually spent uh, my career, my entire career, like professional uh, side, if not freelancing, then uh, being a tech artist uh, in in the VR industry. So uh, that was really fun. I love being a tech artist, um, but and doing and doing freelancing and streaming on the side. you guys would like to know more about like uh, Ringling and the programs that we have there and whatnot, just feel free to DM me on social media um, and I'll get, get back to you. I, nowadays, I have my own business uh, where I, <laughs> no shocker, I'm doing education. Um, so I have a mentorship program and a workshop. The mentorship is basically like a, a service that I provide for people in the industry that want to level up their careers. Maybe uh, they, they want to get their first jobs, uh, or they want to get a promotion, or they want to just level up their skills, level up their self-discipline, their routine, workflows, etc. But also some people just want to learn ZBrush or learn how to make arts. And that's a little bit of what I do. I help them and I make completely customized uh, curriculums for them. In my workshop that takes place every Wednesday, I teach sculpting. Just straight up sculpting. No, just like uh, right now we are doing... Um, we're doing a master study and we chose Bernini. We were gonna do Michelangelo, but we chose Bihanini. And um, it's really, it's really been fun. We were went one week to turn down the intensity of when Damien's dance. We're kind of carving in some muscles. I missed a lot of chats. Congratulations on four years. Thank you, Sahaju. Gerardo, first time here. How to add nail? <laughs> like this? Um, I actually did it on my last stream. You can go check it out on the video. But basically, I just made a sphere, used the deformer to make it like pointy and, and, and curved. Then I applied it to one finger. So I did one finger and one claw, and then I just duplicated the one finger and claw together a bunch of times so that it was easier for me. And I made it a different mesh from the finger to make everything nice and clean. How much for the mentorship service? So I put the link in chat. I'll put it in again. But it's basically, it's, it's really complex <laughs> to describe. But basically it's 150 for the most basic mentorship. Um, but they all have the same services. All that changes is the one-on-one -on -one time. Um, that, that you would get per month. 
DM me if you or email me, DM me, whatever if you have any questions. Anything like that. So I kind I like how I kind of like was gonna bring up what we were gonna work on today, and then I just decided to do the Gorgonops. Like I'm not sure if this is what we're working on today. <laughs> If I'm going to be 100% honest, because um, another thing about me, I'm still working on my updated elevator pitch, so to speak. Um, another thing about me is that I also run a TikTok account. So I guess I'm a TikToker, but I don't feel like a TikToker, you know? That's the... It, it feels foreign to say it, like, I'm a TikToker. Being a TikToker feels like a young man's game. But anyway... Uh, I make TikTok videos and I make them about like little cryptids, you know, and I sculpt them in ZBrush um, and stuff and it's really cute and I make these like really cringy videos. If you guys have seen my TikTok, you know. <laughs> I'm like, the Yeti walking around in the mountains. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just sculpting. Um, so I actually haven't put out a new TikTok in a very, very long time. And I actually need to get back on it. <laughs> uh, or my, my TikTok people will think I've died. Boa tarde a todos, Sandro. Boa tarde você também, Sandro. Um calor daqueles aqui no Rio de Janeiro. Eu acabei de voltar do Rio, né, Alexandre? Eu voltei semana passada, inclusive. Eu tava adorando. I just watched your Zebra Summit tutorial for creating an eye and commented my thanks. Then I saw that you're streaming here, so thank you. Oh my god, what a coincidence. <laughs> Very cool, price is reasonable, talking about the mentorship. Thank you. Well, well, if you're interested, please please feel free to DM me or oh, just join and I'll and I'll get you settled in. Um, after the stream is over. TikTok is a good place to gain followers, I think. When you record, you use ZBrush's ZBrush Recorder. Oh my god, great topic, great question. So, let's talk about being a 3D slash ZBrush artist on TikTok. Okay, you guys ready? I'm about to give you my secret, because uh, I only have like 20 TikToks up, and like 3 or 4 of them are just repeated, so they're not... Um, they're not even unique, they're just like reposted. And I have 129,000 followers, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. For me, for me, it's kind of crazy. Um, so basically, what I do is I record with OBS. Um, so I record with OBS, which is what I use to stream as well. I make sure that when I'm recording for TikTok, I'm, I'm, I'm really centering the art piece that I'm doing. So like I can't do it over here or whatever because like the TikTok screen is vertical, right? So you gotta make sure that you're thinking about the verticality of the screen. But like if you're zoomed in, you think that the person's gonna see all of this, but actually they're just gonna see the middle. So make sure that framing is the first thing you think about when you're making a, a 3D art TikTok. Next, um, I keep mine short, like 15 seconds short. One, because I'm a busy person who hasn't got all day. And two, because uh, it's just, honestly, if people have low attention spans anyway, you know, whatever. So I just, I record the process of sculpting something, then I, I scrub through it and I use Premiere, but you guys can do whatever you, I mean, if you're, if you're going to do it at all, do whatever you want. You know, there's free software out there. Scrub through and find the most juicy, fun looking parts of the process that you can. Um, so like... You know, you're not going to want to, like, show yourself probably, like, doing this, you know? Because, like, a lot of artists do this. I do this all the time. Like, I'm just, like, blah, 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 blah. Like, doing some, like, unnoticeable changes. You're going to want to show yourself doing, like, the crazy, like, snake hook, spiral brush, masking and pulling, you know, um, things. And then after that, just put it all together. That's literally my recipe for a TikTok. Oh, and, and do a voiceover. Put it over some sort of trending sound. I I, I thought about, you know, like, I, I share these tips with my mentees and people in my workshop have access to, like, my knowledge base. <laughs> but um, honestly, I, I, I don't gatekeep TikTok at all because I want more of us there. TikTok, like, right now, is the algorithm is, is still really fertile for, like, growth, you know? 
but it won't be like that forever probably it will probably become instagram over time eventually like it will become greedy and annoying um some people already think it's annoying <laughs> but it'll become worse um so you really want to capitalize on on the algorithm now this is actually something i talk about in my book uh that has not been published yet uh, I am, I'm writing a book about how to thrive in the industry as a professional artist. And it's not about uh, your uh, usual advice, like, work hard, do the right things, be professional. It's like it's like a, a more uh, out-of-the-box, very direct and strategic approach to like leveling up your career. Uh, and... Um, I talk about social media and I don't say anything about any platform in general like in specifically but like I, I urge people to stay in stay in track about which social platforms are um, the most giving so to speak in in any moment and like recycle your content there like recycle it for God's sakes like post if you're posting an image to Instagram, you might as well take the extra five minutes to post it on Twitter and um, Facebook. I don't know, I can't think of other things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just, just re recycle and that stuff, you know? But um, on top of that, you know, we have to uh, stay up to date with, like, which algorithms are being the best. Like, right now, like, the only real way to get Instagram followers is to post reels because they're trying to become TikTok, right? Um, which is kind of annoying for everybody. <laughs> Marketing yourself, yeah. Uh-huh. You're saying something here. There, needs to post TikTok. Yeah, honestly, guys, like, if you, if you take my advice today and you start posting TikToks for yourself, like, literally DM me your TikTok account and I will follow you on TikTok. Like, I need to find more 3D artists on TikTok. I need to find more zebrish people making a move, you know, there. It's not the most popular platform for us. Like I could only name like like 3 or 4 artists that do zebrish that that do TikTok with any sort of consistency. Um so I need to follow some some new people, you know. Otherwise, my feed is just not that, not that artistic. <laughs> how many sub tools are in your sculpts? Good, uh, good question. <laughs> Even better question is how many of them are named. So I have the uh, original block out for the Gorgonops. I could probably delete that. Uh, I have the body, eyes, uh, old block out for feet. Delete that. Teeth, teeth, teeth. <laughs> What is that? Oh, finger. Teeth. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Nine sub tools? But like that's that that's not for any reason. I just a little bit um disorganized. Damn it, I need to get on TikTok. <laughs> Uh, I feel like in comparison to other social media t platforms, TikTok seems easier to be gained followers. Am I crazy? So it's it's different. It's not easier. Uh, but what TikTok does, especially for new people, is it will uh, test out your videos. So it will send your videos out to more people to see if it engages them. And if it does, like you'll go viral and you'll get a lot of a lot of new followers. If it doesn't, you won't. You know. So don't go into TikTok expecting. Uh, monumental um, effortless growth because honestly that's like a great way to just get disappointed and give up right is like unrealistic expectations if monumentous growth happens then hell yeah you know but don't go in expecting it is probably the main thing um, All I get done today is like working out the anatomy of this bit. Be happy because um, that bit 
I don't want to say, I don't call him names. This little guy doesn't even have calves properly. Uh, somebody asked me something about Unreal 5. What are your thoughts about Unreal 5? Is it a game changer for game development? And if so, why? Sehaju. I've been asked this like 40 million times. Honestly, my opinion doesn't really change that much, but like a lot of people are so much more excited about it than I am. Because I think um, it, it's going to be a game changer, yeah. It's going to give us a lot of possibilities that we didn't have before. A lot of powerful tools that we didn't have before, so that stuff's exciting. It's just I don't think it's going to be quite as easy and simple as everybody's making it out to be. You know, like, you're not gonna, like, export, you're probably not gonna, I don't know, I might be wrong, export your ZBrush model straight into Unreal and call it a day, you know, and be done with your job. No, like, you're gonna have to retop, because, for one, animation doesn't change, like, the situation's still the same for animated meshes, but, um... You 3D print your sculpts? Actually, I just started 3D printing my sculpts. Yes, yes, yes. Let me show you uh, something. <laughs> so this is my new 3D printing... Oh, the cat is right here. He's reaching out. Hi! Uh, my new 3D printing... Um... Uh, let me make myself bigger. This is one of my 3D sculpts um, printed. It's one of my first prints. This was literally uh, print number three or something to come out of my printer. It's not perfect because I don't know what I'm doing. I had to cut some of the parts of the horns off right here. But like, it's okay. Look, look at how big this is. It's like blurred out. <laughs> look at it in comparison to my face. <laughs> um... So this dragon has some history behind it. This dragon was made for um, for NVIDIA, so I did a tutorial series collab with them on ZBrush and a few other softwares. Um, and I made this dragon as my final tutorial. In fact, if you would like to go watch it, just uh, search for NVIDIA Studio uh, and you'll find my dragon tutorial. It's literally how to make a dragon from high poly to low poly to game ready, so it's really cool. So anyway, uh, so I made this in collaboration with NVIDIA, but then Frozen 3D sent me a 3D printer. Uh, so I printed this in collaboration with Frozen 3D. So now this dragon gets around, you know, like ZBrush, NVIDIA, Frozen, um, I guess not ZBrush, Pixelogic. But uh, look at how big this is. This was done with a, um, a Frozen 3D 4K Mighty sized printer. So, really neat. Then I have uh, a bunch of naked people. Got some a goat. This one's very cute, very near and dear to my heart because um, um, what makes this one special to me is that um, this is the model I used for my very first YouTube tutorial. And so, uh, I've been meaning to do YouTube for years, but I've never had the time and or <laughs> courage to do it. So last month I started putting out tutorials, and this is the first one. I got, like, I'm gonna censor. <laughs> Anatomy sculpts. I need to put, like, a post-it on her, like a really ironic looking post-it note. <laughs> Um, but I, for this one, it didn't go super well. So like, there's some flaws in the in the in the print in the back. You see, 
there, for example. It is how it is, I'm learning. So this was probably like my sixth or seventh sculpt. Um, this one's a sculpt that my friend Sage made for me, like out of my model. But it wasn't me that made it. It's a lot better than my sculpts, or my prints for now, because he knows what he's doing. I haven't dusted off the 3D printer since I got back from Brazil, so I have to. Love the goat, thank you! Oh, Dylan, hi! Welcome, welcome! Have you seen Arcane? No, not yet. Magica? I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. Can you describe it? It's resin, right? Which printer are you using and what processes do you run after the piece is printed? Yes, yeah, so, so it's a Frozen 3D Mighty 4K. Let me... I don't even know how to get a link at this point. I don't know how to make... Like, Frozen was so nice to me. They they gave me an affiliate link and all this other stuff, and I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I can't promote this because I don't know how. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> well, okay. If you want to buy a printer, please DM me. <laughs> it's me, your printer salesman. <laughs> I have that sales gene, you know? Just kidding, I do not have any sort of sales gene in my body. Do you put a little bit of yourself in your sculpts? Yes, I do. Um, but here's the thing. This is a hard question. Oh, well, at least it's been a hard question for years, and now it's getting easier, but... I have what's called an undefined heart chakra. Basically, I, I have really hard time knowing where the heck, who the heck I am. You know, like, I, I've just never been able to identify myself uh, as an entity or otherwise. Just never was able to, to figure out, like, where I end and other people begin. It's like a whole thing that I don't even want to get into. But, but like, you know, by talking about it, it sounds crazy and unusual, but there's probably at least somebody here watching that has the same thing. Like, I couldn't tell. So, um, I was very mutable as far as my identity. Therefore, I would do sort of stuff like, like whoever I'm around or whoever I'm looking at or whatever I'm, I'm consuming in the time becomes what I, what I wish to be. Therefore, uh... I don't know what I've been putting into my sculpts that's me, but I know that there's something there that is me, right? Because all my sculpts have a similar vein of style, right? I've been told what it is on the internet before. Um, like, like people say I sculpt elegantly. I don't know if you guys agree. Um, I certainly wouldn't claim that about myself right now. <laughs> um... Uh, I've been told I sculpt in a feminine way. That sounds right. Você pretende pintar depois os prints? Não, eu não sei pintar, galera. Eu não sou boa em pintura. That's the sculpt from Gumroad, right? The woman. Yes, Sergi. Could you please tell us about the start of your career, Leandro? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sit comfortably for this. It's fine, I'll DM you on Instagram. Thank you. After the stream, I'll check my DMs everywhere and like find you guys DMing me. Uh, I'll say it as your promo guy if needed. I'm happy to promote my mentor. Well, I mean, um, actually, we could talk about that. So, like, I did hire a different mentee um, to do stuff for me, <laughs> so why not? <laughs> um, Oh my god! Majam Mystic, during this video, my wife, do baby born, I will be father. <laughs> Your wife is giving birth right now? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? 
and congrats. <laughs> Is it your face ba first baby? I'm guessing so since your father. Well, yeah, so, so I'm off track. Um, somebody asked me about the start of my career. In order to talk about the start of my career, we must go back... Um, nine years. Go back nine years. That seems like a good place to start. One day I woke up. Just kidding. Um... So the start of my career, so if we go back long enough, not not nine years, but much, much longer. Um, I've always been an artist. Like, the fact that I was going to go into arts was never up for discussion. It was never an option, because it was the only option. So, like, there were no options, therefore it wasn't even an option, because it was an option. It wasn't an option because it was mandatory, basically. Um, thankfully, my parents supported me and I never had to go through that, like, really f fucking tired situation of, like, oh, you should be a lawyer or whatever, you know? So I, I didn't have that, thank God. God. Um, so I've always been drawing uh, for... Um, since I was, like... I could hold the pencil, basically. It's so like baby, baby status. Um, and I used to ask my parents, like, my sister would get dolls and makeup and I would get pencils. <laughs> There's this picture of me, like, I had, like, this, like, high-ass fever and I was, like, out of it. And I was, like, four years old holding up, like, this horrible pencil drawing of, like, a yellow flower that just looked, like, white against white. Just, like, out of it. And my parents were like, oh, good job. <laughs> Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, is that um, I'd been drawing... I, by the time I decided on my career, I had been drawing for like almost 20 years every day, daily. I decided... Uh, I was living in Brazil, and so I was studying hard to get into public college. And um, I decided I was going to go for graphic design. Because that was kind of like the, the option for somebody who was artistically inclined like me. Those of you who are Brazilian might identify with this. Like, like that was... I, I, I didn't think game design or like 3D art or anything of that, like that was an option at the time I was going for it. I thought about doing fashion because um, that was another interesting creative option. But um, my parents were not thrilled about that one. That was like the one time I did not get... Oh god, did I turn off symmetry at some point? Did I not get support? Um, because I have never been a very fashionable individual, according to my father. Anyway, um, I studied hard, guys, for three years to get in, to go through a test called vestibular. Um, and when I finally get into college, my mom goes, "Carol, by the way." <laughs> um, we're going to move to the United States, so you don't need to go to this college anymore. Choose something else. So I was like, oh my god, after three years of sacrifice. Okay, anyway, but I was happy anyway, regardless. And I... Literally, at this point, I had like an, a deviant art account, and, um, and I was following some really inspiring people on there. And I decided, like, it was, like, midnight on a random, like, Tuesday. And I go on there and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? Like, shit, graphic design's off the table because I never really wanted graphic design. And I saw this artist. I don't remember who it was, what the art was, or anything like that. But I remember that they said it was for a game. And I was like, concept art for games? What? So I tell my parents the next morning, I'm like, I want to do games! And they're like, okay. So we figured it out. I went to college for games. So I went to the Art Institute for Game Art and Design. Uh, I signed up before I even moved to the United States. I didn't even get a tour. I didn't get anything. Like, I literally just showed up on the first day of class. Like, literally, that was how easy it was. Um, that should have been a red flag. <laughs> because the education was not high quality. And now that I teach at a at a very high quality college, like it's it's even more abundantly clear, you know. Um, but the thing is, is that 
um, it was fine at the end of the day because honestly, like, if you're expecting somebody to give your education, like, in a silver platter handed to you, even at the college I'm at now, like, teaching, like, that's not how you do that. Like, you're supposed to supplement your own knowledge. You're supposed to go after, find out what you actually want to do, you know, go after um, that knowledge yourself. Like, I think so myself. And then, like, the teachers are there to create, like, a structure and guideline for you keep you accountable and things like that because like that's one really hard thing to do like as uh, if you decide to not go to college is like self accountability right like giving yourself deadlines sticking to them <laughs> pixelogic pixel pixelogic junior <laughs> um so i brought my own education to the education so to speak and everything was totally fine um i wanted to be a, a concept artist a 2d concept artist but then um, time went by and we learned how to use 3ds max and man I gotta tell you I hated it like 3d was not for me like max man like that stuff is punishing um, but then one day like towards like the end of my education um, I had a teacher who taught us ZBrush and I remember it only took one ZBrush class I was like this is my new life <laughs> So I literally switched, I dropped wanting to be a 2D concept artist completely, like completely. I never thought about it again. And then, um, um, I, I became, started reaching for the 3D artist, 3D character artist career. But he, the thing is, is that I was here on a student visa. And for those of you who know, Student visas are like really freaking stressful because you can't work while you're on a student visa, but um, unfortunately, once you graduate, you can stay for a little longer and work, but only if you get a job in 90 days. So like basically you can't work for four years and then you have 90 days to get a job and you can't start earlier, you know, because like it's hard. Um, so I start freaking out. I graduate I'm like losing it right like ready for total implosion I, I didn't believe that I could get a character art job that fast in 90 days not at my skill level anyway that I was at at the time I was like this is unrealistic but I had to sit down and have a really hard look at this number of statistics and um, everything else and I had to decide what to do next so I found out this that this very specific career path called technical artist. <laughs> Imagine me, like somebody who just drew for 20, 20 years at this point, or like more. Um, went from wanting to be a concept artist to a character artist, and then they were like, oh, you know what sounds right for me? Technical artist. Yeah, you're right, Philip. Like, I hated box modeling and the technical nature of it. I actually just hated Max, but, like, also, like, I even hated box modeling and, like, hard surface. Like, and I decided to become a technical artist. And I was like, this is fine. <laughs> so what I did was I I went to a friend's house and we bought some technical arts uh, courses on, like, Udemy. They weren't technical art courses, they were like the most basics of basics in Unreal. Like, how to import a model, how to set up a quick material, how to like, put in lights. Like, that's how basic it was. And then a different one that was like, substance designer, like how to make bricks or wood or whatever. And I would go to her house twice a week, and we would like, learn how to do that stuff. Um, all while I was still pushing really hard on my character art side. Um... And I was like, the only way I'm gonna get this job if I'm a technical artist, God! <laughs> um, so I I put it out into the universe, I guess. I tell everybody that I know, ah, uh, you know me, the, the fine arts girl who likes sculpting? I am going to be a technical artist now. And everybody was like, okay, cool. You do you, girl. <laughs> and the word got out that somebody out in this world wanted to be a technical artist like like being a technical artist is so hard and so rare that like once people even hear that you're considering it like opportunities already open and so i had a job i, I didn't apply mind you 
I do not apply for any jobs. I did zero job searching in that period of time. I was literally just doing tutorials and like self-defeating. I was like, nobody's going to hire me anyway, so I'm not even going to apply. That's just embarrassing, whatever. I didn't apply for any jobs and I got a job in like <laughs> three weeks or something like that. Like it was crazy. They were literally like, hey, you want to be a technical artist? Yeah. Are you okay with learning on the job? Yeah. <laughs> and you're you're a decent artist, so you can actually get all the other stuff done when we need it. Yeah. Okay, you're hired. Um, I'm so freaking like lucky for that. Like, I'm so freaking thankful for that opportunity. Like, you guys have no idea. It came exactly when I needed it. It was exactly what I needed. Like in every way, uh, every way. Um, you know. I used to love that job. I I really did like like that job. Like I would have loved to have stayed there longer. Like I loved that fucking job um, for a long time uh, until I didn't love it anymore. Um, so what did you do in that job? I was a technical artist, and I really was. Like it started with like a hybrid situation where um, I would do a lot of three D arts, level level design, environment art, things like that but they would throw in a lot of technical art challenges and problems in. Um, so like in any given week, I would do maybe like three days of environment art and, and 3D art in general, and then two days of like actual tech art. And I would, I would base it all on research. Like I would go like, okay, uh, I have to solve this really hard technical problem that I've never seen before. So I would like literally go like, like deep deep inside forums, deep inside tutorials, and just try and try and try, and eventually it would work out. And like, I gotta tell you guys, every time it would work out. And that's something I tell my students all the time, like the internet, dude, it has so many free, kind, nice, like, hints, at least hints, like tutorials, sure, forum posts, sure, but like, like people will hint at the problem. Sometimes by reading how somebody structured their question in a forum, even though nobody answered it, will give you the answer. Um, so I little by little trained myself. I never ended up getting education or anything, but I learned how to blueprints in Unreal. I learned how to set up advanced materials. I learned how to do a ton of optimization, right? Uh, I was working in VR. So at one point I even, uh, one of my specialties became to like port heavy, uh, heavy, high, um, high, like, graphics, I guess, PC VR games to the Quest, the original Quest, before there was, there was even a link cable. Stuff hurt. Um, and, like, turns out I liked it, you know, like, I liked being a tech artist, I like being a character artist, it's just that, like, um, I'm utilizing both sides of my brain, I guess. Like, if, you, if you're a person who can think both ways, like, I recommend um, looking into tech arts for yourself. You can do a lot of freaking cool stuff, that's for sure. But um, that's like the, the summary of the beginning of my career. Like, I, I, I went into tech art thinking, hey, this is just going to be a few years and then I'm going to get a character art job. But in that time, I fell in love with it. I did character art freelance anyway. I um, I fell out of love with AAA. So like one of my uh, goals had been to be a AAA artist. But then I realized that wasn't even my goal. That was just like influence from people at school. That like to them being a, a AAA uh, employee was like the end game. And that had never been my intention going into it. Like I, I never went into game art in order to like work on Halo or whatever you know like that wasn't my goal my goal was to like do something else you know so once I shed that once I shed that triple A goal that wasn't authentic to me uh it became very clear that I loved tech cards I love what I do and like I get to do character art anyway but instead of like doing the character art for other people that I don't want to do I only do what I want to do it's really freaking cool Wake up, awesome, to the bang. 
A finder. Could you please tell me how much time is provided for the dinosaur model, which means how much time is required to complete this model with textured? So, um, I, I don't have a estimate right now because I spend time on this while I'm streaming, talking, and yelling at people. So the times are all way off, but um, I would like to get this done in like 10, 10 to 20 hours. Uh, Philippe Ferro, so I have not met him yet. COVID and whatnot like makes meeting people extremely hard right now for me anyway. Better safe than sorry. I've become a shut-in and I and I realized that was always my best form. And I, oh, I remember that. Jubilee sounds boring to me. I want to be indie and more involved in the planning. Yeah. Basically how I was. And am. Like, depending on the, on the ebb and flow of things, you know, like, I'll work on an indie game, a serious game, a VR, um, museum projects. So it's like, museum projects actually is what I'm interested in this year for freelance. Uh, but I haven't been looking, or even told anybody that I'm open. <laughs> um, but if I could, this year, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out into the, um, um, universe, I guess, now. So, it have to come, because it happens every time, man. Um, I would like to work for a museum exhibit this month. Not this month, this year. Like, or, or maybe like a prehistoric documentary, something that lets me sculpt prehistoric creatures. Last year I actually did a museum project um, for the Rosa Parks Museum. Alabama. No mustache. Take your time, just pause my spawn sculpting to watch it, mishear my mother language, but today she's speaking more Portuguese. <laughs> I had a Portuguese stream on Saturday last week. Should have been there. Funky little legs. So, uh, <laughs> since I'm not really narrating the, um... Since I'm not really narrating the process, just to give you guys an idea, I'm kind of starting to find and refine the anatomy. So this particular creature is really hard on the anatomy side for the main reason that it's really freaking hard to find reference. Every reference is different. Um, and I'm just trying to make it look more organic, so I'm starting to find a little bit of fat, a little bit of folds, a little bit here and there. Try not to overdo it too. I, I tend to overdo it with lizards. <laughs> I'm like, there's gotta be more, and then the lizards are like, nope. Shit. Thinking the workshop topic for next month is going to be prehistoric. Reference a Komodo dragon. Yeah, I am, but I but I have the danger of turning it into a Komodo dragon. I don't. Do you have an interest in prehistory and paleontology? Yeah, extremely so. Like, I love it. When I, I watch <laughs> prehistoric documentaries for funsies, like, regularly. Lately, like, I, I, I've been doing a lot of self-reflecting, so to speak, um, since 
since COVID started. Like, COVID helps put a lot of things in perspective. It helps me get out of certain influences, spend more time on my own. And I gotta tell you, like, the solitude feels amazing. Um, and so, um, um, how do I, how do I put it? I was talking about completely because I read something in chat. Well, being alone as well, some people can't understand that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everybody's made different, right? Like, some people need that constant noise of others. For me, it's overwhelming. Like, I can't. Like, when I'm around people, I pick up influences. You know, like, I pick up their influence. What if, what if it's not the right influence for me? This is, comes back to that thing I was saying earlier about, like, having trouble identifying myself in a crowd. Like, having trouble knowing where I end and people begin, you know? Like, I don't want to do that anymore. Chill. Um, this creature is more of a proto-mammal. Yeah, I don't know. But thank you for filling chat in. So what they said is that scene. <sighs> I'm unproductive when I'm completely alone. One day I'll buy a house far from everything. Just need to get the kids a little bit older. <laughs> like, I want a house that has a huge yard and I don't have to see anybody, but I want it to be like really close to town. Nos Estados Unidos, provavelmente, Vitor. Uh, what a software name. This is called ZBrush. It's a digital sculpting software. Miracles, what you doing? <laughs> Did you guys hear him when he yells? It is a fuzzy love you. Let's see. Get them singing in this. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. It just meow me from the ground. me and sparkles give him the man show can you guys hear that the real star he's actually the one that holds the pen Such a fur bug. He's fur and he's happy. High five. High five. Show the crowd what you can do. High five. High bro. I haven't high five in a while. Nope, that's not a high five though. Give me the highest of fives. Apparently not today. He woke up and chose to not high five. All right, I'm getting you to go sit over there.
What language do you speak to your cat? English. I speak to my cat in English because he's an American cat. He grew up in an American household. But. And he, like, understands when you say stuff to him. It's weird. Not everything, but, like, he understands commands. He's, like, obedience. <laughs> He's trained. I think it's Rikadiaka accents. <laughs> This cat understands what we're telling her too. So smart. Oh yeah, German works to get cats' attention, supposedly. Uh, do you sculpt the eyes or texture it afterwards? So I'll sculpt the eyes and texture it afterwards. <laughs> Does it require a course of self-practice? Both! You need to take a course and self-practice. Normally I, I recommend like taking a course and then self-practicing with the method that the course taught you and then eventually broadening out to more methods. I'm gonna put out a course this year, but uh, it's it's not even close to being ready yet. Bye, Cap Awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, não consegui meu primeiro emprego na área. Parabéns, Lucas. Parabéns. Que bom. Boas notícias. Tá gostando? Já começou? I'm not aware of fur creation. Are you using ZBrush for fur? Could you please explain how to make fur for game character? Oh my god, I'll find there. That's like a whole knowledge base on its own. So. Let's see. Um, first thing is that for, for most games, maybe not forever, but for now. Sparkles! For now, um, we use hair cards, which is basically like flat planes of like strips of polygons that have transparency alpha on it, and then the material uh, is is uh, the material that looks like hair, basically. Um, 
as far as how to do that, like that's a whole thing on its own. Um, I don't think I can go into that here, especially because it's it's got like a billion steps, and I'd never be able to. You, you wouldn't be able to follow along, basically. But I do plan on eventually having a course on it. Thank you, Rahu. Uma segunda, para, uh, boa sorte, parabéns. What's that? So this is called a Gorgonops. It is a mammal-like reptile from way back in time, before the dinosaurs. Trying to find some of the anatomy. Where is it hidden? I don't know. So Lucas, what would you say was the most important part of getting your first job in the industry? person project yes it's going to be like a really cool diorama 3d print Maybe I'll like sell it on like Thingiverse or something. I, I honestly like don't know where where to even put my 3D prints. Like my model has gone off center. My mini factory is a popular one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Oops, I missed the training in last minutes. Oh no, they gasp. Mycanops, uh, Gorgonops. How's everyone today? I'm good, how are you?
for your printing stuff today and sort to must hobby stuff. <sighs> Thank you, Dr. Suki. Hannibal, how you doing? I'm feeling better. My back injury is gone. I have to quarantine like many of my coworkers who've been out sick at the hospital, so I'm not looking forward to missing work this early into the new job. Hopefully, I'll be back within five days. I'm sure, they'll understand. Like, I guess, I guess, it depends on who they are, right? Like. Honestly, my expectations for, for people have been severely changed this past year or so. That's why I'm making 2022. Let's get into something. So I am making 2022 my year for uh, financial freedom. And I don't know, I, I guess a lot of people uh, define that differently. But for me, it's going to be um, to have enough separate incomes. So let, let's talk about money first. Something that I'm sure we talk a lot about in the Pixel Logic streams. Um, it's to make enough money from enough different incomes that you if one one gets canceled falls through you get fired whatever like you're okay and you don't have to worry you can release some attachments to to certain things like like um if you don't like your job like you'll feel safe to quit because you have enough income coming in from different places you know like that's kind of and the vibe I'm going for. <laughs> I'm not saying that I don't like my job. I'm just saying that that's what I want. Life and hard on it. In the meantime, I'll overcome sculpts. Yeah. <sighs> nice. Let's talk about money. How, what sorts of incomes do you have? Are they all art related? Uh, right now I have three sources of income. Uh, and two of them are art related. Hey Leroy Toss, how are you doing today? Um, so yeah, I have, I have my mentorship workshop. Actually, I guess I have four. I, I, okay, let's count. <laughs> um, I, I have my full-time job. I have my mentorship and workshop. I have investing. And then finally, I have uh, influencer deals and affiliate marketing, which I'm not quite good yet yet. But I have links, but I just don't know where, where to find them or put them. <laughs> Nailed it. Um... So I'm trying to get somewhere where I don't know I, I can do my own thing more. You know, I just I just I I've been doing so much thinking on myself. Like literally, like last Sunday, I canceled all my streams for my personal channel after they had already been canceled for six months. But anyway, because I had like this like huge breakthrough and one of my like biggest hangups in life, 
like something that like it was at the core of every freaking problem I have like was was a fear and I was able to identify the fear right like I, I identified the fear maybe like uh right when I was coming back from Brazil I was able to identify that fear and then and on Sunday I was able to expose myself to that fear and find out that feeling the fear like feeling the thing happening in real life is nowhere as bad as uh, just having all that anxiety about it. Like, I don't, I don't know how much of my heart I wanna, I wanna bear out to you guys today. Um, but basically, like, I, I have tons of anxiety and fears and stuff around this one issue, right? That I must have picked up when I was a kid. Like, like whatever, like, like something happened, I guess. Um. And now I've been able to identify and kind of like see that in everything, permeating everything. Hey, mushy mushy. Um, and so on Sunday, I was like, oh my god. Actually going through the, uh, actually going through the fear is not as bad as being fearful of the fear. So I counted how many times like a, an instance that would have been like my worst nightmare happened in the past like two years, and it only happened six times. Um, um, but you'd think it was a thousand times a day because, um, because my brain just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. Reality is much less scary than what your mind makes it to be, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So once I was able to expose myself to the fear, I realized that it's not that bad. And then just like freaking magic. Like now I feel like I'm free. 10 out of 10. We recommend. I recommend you guys watching... Uh, I'm sorry, reading the book called The Mountain Is You. That, that book kind of opened a lot of the doorway for me to be able to figure that shit out. I feel like I'm mentally going back to my days of being a financial financial counselor, showing people how to be debt-free, financially independent, and protect themselves from loss. Well, give us some tips. What's your best tip? The only thing to fear is fear itself. We suffer more in our imagination than in real life. Oh my god, it's so true, Hannibal. So true. Hope you can figure that out. Thanks. I, I, I feel like I already did. I feel really free right now. And like, I can finally like level up more. Because I'm not holding myself back. And I wish all that for all of you guys. <laughs> Happy 2020, too. Mentally, I'm still in 2020. Physically, also still in 2020. Hmm. 2022, 2022, 2025, baby. I really hope I get a dog this year. That's a good New Year's resolution, right? I, I took care of my friend's dog, Lola, for a while at the beginning of the year. Oh, just five days or something. Five or six days. And I had a buddy to, like, go walking with me all the time. I made her lose, like, five pounds or something because I was walking that dog a lot. <laughs> she was a little chubby. Um, and now I just go and walk by myself. Isn't that sad? <laughs> I think that's very sad. I think I need to get a dog. I mean a puppy? Um, I don't know what I said. Get a puppy soon then. Honestly, like, I have no attachment to getting a large, like, grown-up dog. Like, whatever, it's already pre-trained. That's how I got Sparkles, you know, like, Sparkles uh, had been living with a family for a while. Figure out these freaking ankles here is a big thing. 
Oh, here's Odon with the tip. The best tip is save and invest money as early in your life as possible. If I had a second best tip, it's to develop good spending habits now. If anything else, be consistent when investing in your future. This thing is scary. Every time you gorgon ups as your dog <laughs> wakes up without a leg. I just stopped eating at every meal and oh man, I'd be saving that cash. Dude, like the amount of money I've saved since COVID started because like I, I didn't go out. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Just not doing anything just helped. Nazmul, is that some kind of prehistoric creature? Whatever it is looks cool. I have a question. Are you a creature, art, designer, or character designer just looking at your work? Um, so I do it for freelance, and for fun, and for education. For, yeah. So yes. Why can't I have it as my cat instead? <laughs> Let me share my links again. Link overkill in three, two. Here are all my links for you guys to follow me on social media. I have my own Twitch channel where I stream Zebrush as well. Talks there are a lot more free, um, for sure. Like I, I just we go hard on some topics on my channel. You should join. Uh, I have a new YouTube for full of YouTube tutorials. Well, it has four tutorials right now, but it will have more in the future. Uh, I have a Discord channel where it's a great place to hang out with uh, professional 3D artists, uh, aspiring 3D artists, and just network and have fun and do challenges and things like that. Uh, I have a waitlist for my free workshop. So at the beginning of every month, I do a free workshop. Uh, you have to get on the waitlist, so there's the link. And I do uh, just in general workshops and mentorships if you want to level up your career. Uh, if you need somebody to hold you accountable, to guide you, show you the way, so to speak. Um, work with your your own uh, strengths and weaknesses and curate a perfect curriculum for you. To figure out what you need to improve, where you are in comparison to others, like what jobs you're going for, what skills you need, what skills you have. Um, look at your resume, look at your portfolio, get you working on your projects, like in, just in general, hold you accountable. Please don't hesitate to get in my mentorship program. Your first and second link are the same. Okay. No, it's Twitch and Twitter. <laughs> so I have a link tree, but I I'm, I don't know if anybody knows how to use a link tree. I, I, maybe I'm just underestimating people, but I know I've had problems in the past. Oh yeah, I never been able to see it because I don't know I'm not early now, but I've heard tags are pretty friendly for big lizards. Bye bye. Bye. I think it's a pretty big attitude on them. <laughs> How do we sculpt in the attitude, guys? I mean, it's possible. Literally, we can sculpt in the attitude. Beauty of sculpting.
Uh, do you think it's bad to work for NFT collections? I'm broke, sad face. Uh, how do I put this? <laughs> in the most... So, I don't believe in telling people like 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 that's like a, a like a full core belief of my personhood is that i don't believe in telling people what's right and what's wrong i don't believe in telling them what to do with their lives like um only i'm only good at guiding based on your exact um situation right um <laughs> Um, I mean, so do I work with NFTs? No, I have made that decision early on. I found out about NFTs very early and I decided I was going to do it, but then I found out the consequences, which were, uh, the only thing I care about, I don't care if it's like a scam. I don't care if it's whatever. I don't care about any of that. I care about the environmental impact, high environmental impact things are not for me that is just a moral and a and a more moral choice i made a long time ago and i'm sticking to it right i found out about nfts like uh i think it was i don't remember but but i, I remember thinking like i really want to do these but it's not worth it i'm not going to compromise the planet earth myself i'm not going to do it because i don't want to right I, I, at that point i didn't even 3d print because i thought 3d printing was bad for the environment too like and, and it is to a degree right but like not as bad as nfts um and i just wasn't gonna do that and then i decided you know what if i just want to make money if that's why i want to do nfts then i'm gonna make money in a way that makes the world better not worse um and so I decided to do my mentorship. Like that was like literally like a like a one after the other thoughts, right? Do I think you shouldn't do NFTs? I don't. I don't make that decision for anybody. I just don't do them because of my morals. If you have different morals, do it or not do it for other reasons, whatever. Um, I I'm currently in a position where I believe there is. Um, I don't know. It feels like there's very little point in. In boycotting it at this point like everybody's doing it. it's like celebrities randos on the internet tiktokers like everybody's doing it you know uh, but I also believe that there is enough um, this is we're gonna get into big life picture shit all right so the earth <laughs> has been around for billions and billions of years 99.999% of all species are extinct for you to have an idea. Fucking continents shift. Things change. And what we're going through right now is just another change. Right? Um, after humanity, let's say humanity plots its own death, perishes, like, nature will go on. That's beautiful. Nature will go on. Like, there will be other species. There will be other things that are beautiful and other stuff like that. Like, it will go on forever no matter what. There could be, like, a nuclear fallout situation. It's okay because nature will go on. And I see our contribution is more than just humans. Like, I don't, I don't care about humans that much, to be honest. I think about, like, the big picture Earth thing. Like, until the, until the planet gets too close to the sun or something really bad happens, like, we'll be fine. As far as, like, we the collective. Um, and I believe that this is just another change, uh, you know, and changes, you know. What is good, what's bad, nobody knows in the long run. Um, I'm talking about... <laughs> talking about global warming. <laughs> I found out about some green alternatives just recently. Like, I don't really believe in the green alternatives. Like, it just feels like they're just buying carbon <laughs> offsets or whatever, you know, like... I don't know, I have a very different view on all of this, and like, I feel like I can be problematic talking about it, so maybe I'll stop talking about it, but like, you know... Uh... 
on the on the bright side of a um extreme die off a species <laughs> hear me out uh there's this documentary uh by bbc about the strangest e evolved animals ever and apparently every time there is a large uh clearance of like the competition in an area as far as like evolution so like now i'm talking like past humans okay um so many species will fill that niche all together and they'll just evolve into the craziest stuff you've ever seen like just the craziest like animals ever and then eventually we'll rebalance and they'll die off and like the most adaptable will will stay um but got that to look forward to uh like 500 million years from now you know <laughs> you know that like like human beings are like a blip in the in the long run timeline like right like and honestly i think i think we think too much of ourselves <laughs> this is such a deep conversation i recently moved to purchase only glass metal wood and paper no more plastic uh sparkles <laughs> come here don't be up over there be here he likes to mess around with my 3D printing stuff, which is bad for him and bad for the 3D printing stuff. Come on. Yeah, just stay there. Vibe. There you go. So, plastic. Man, like, plastic is just bad for us. It's just like poison, you know? I say as I drink out of a plastic cup. I want to move away from plastic completely, like, if I can. But I haven't made any moves to yet. If, if you guys are interested in it, like, go do a basic Google research on what plastic is doing to men. Just do it. Just go do it. Humans are an invasive species. We, we have our ancestors to blame for that. Guys, like, I'm completely... I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but, like, I think about the Earth evolution, humanity, philosophy, philosophy, and like ethics every day, like two, three hours per day or something. Um, and, um, you know, like I, I've come to the conclusion for now that, you know, people are like, oh, we don't do things the natural way anymore. Like, um, remember when our ancestors were hunter gatherers, like, we are doing exactly what evolution did for us. Like, like the earth supports this. The sparkles. No, 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 no. Sparkles not doing what he's supposed to. Where's your evolution, kitty cat? Um, the earth evolved us to be this way, to be um, destructive and creative, like, because human beings, they must destroy to create, right? You know, we're just transform transformative. Because um, we can't create anything from scratch, you know? And, and the Earth made us this way, then this is our nature. And we think that we're fighting against our nature, but it is our nature to fight our nature, therefore everything we do is our nature. Mr. Sparkles wants to start a 3D printing business. Man, if you wanted to run my printer like 24-7 and just sell some prints, man, I would let him. <laughs> Joe Rogan podcast. Ceramic is great for cubs. I'm envious of the life of my cats. No worry about bills. Just finding the best spots to snooze. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing this model in 3D. Thank you. We had a pretty big impact for one species, like those worms that dug holes that one time and caused a bunch of ocean life. <laughs> yeah, we we caused bigger impacts as species. Yes, yeah, Scottman, I did say that. I'll move away from plastic too, but straws? Gonna stick with plastic straws though. <laughs> Just get metal straws. This is not what I expected from a zebra stream, love it. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of what my stream's been becoming slowly over the years. It's just ZBrush and Life Talks, let's go. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, human beings have a large impact 
for the time they've been around for one species. You're not wrong. Part of that is that human beings are migratory, right? Whenever the the continents were still all kind of zhuzhed together, you know, and we just we just were like, you know what? How cool would it be to walk like for 500 billion, okay, 500 miles or something, and just go make a settlement like in the cold from from Africa to like cold, cold like northern hemisphere, like like I guess what's now Europe. Like, how cool would that be? That'd be neat. There's a lot of like mammoths here that I can eat, like some woolly rhinoceros, you know. We always went where the big prey was, which was really bad for the big big prey, <laughs> because uh, they reproduce so slowly and we kill them so fast. You know, um, it was just bad for them. That's why most of them died off. If you're gonna be honest, like we've been doing this since before industrialization we've been doing like this since before agriculture like the agricultural revolution like we've been doing this we've been moving to places where we weren't supposed to be and like making changes there it's like the human being way we and we are really good at adapting and really good at being the top of the food chain like a siberian no, okay i guess a Siberian tiger is a bad example uh an african elephant wouldn't just like just go vibe and walk all the way to the fucking close to the north pole and just like live in an igloo you know it wouldn't want to do that <laughs> they do adapt of course like every one on the plane on the way back i, I watched a, a video on like african elephants that live in like the desertiest desert just because they can they're like whatever fuck it i'm just gonna live here now make life hard for myself um but we do that and we disrupt a lot and like it's what we do. It's natural in a weird way, you know? Um, the only large animals that had a chance for a long time were African elephants. Um, because African elephants evolved in Africa where our ancestors evolved in Africa. They evolved together and the African elephants understood that human beings were dangerous and things like that and vice versa. Right? But when you take that out of context, like, um, man travels to North America or something where all the large animals here have never seen man before, you know, they were just not, not, not prepared and died. My friend was like, Carol, that, that theory doesn't work. What about blue whales? And I'm like, we weren't living in the ocean, the deep ocean, for a very long time, just vibing with blue whales. But what are we doing now, right? I don't know. This is a very bleak topic. We kill a lot of things. It's <laughs> bad and good. And I don't know, natural. It's bad and natural. What is good in the long run? I don't know. It's a really complicated topic. Like, human ethics don't always apply to the natural world. Human ethics don't always apply to humans. Or they do apply some humans and then they just ignore it and go do whatever. Go kill a blue whale. Something. <laughs> Not the, thank you. Hannibal, that is how it happened. <clears throat> like literally like go go Google it real fast. Like find out where human humanity evolved from. Unless you're disregarding evolution altogether, which is a whole other conversation that I'm not gonna have. Hello in model with size? I don't know what that means. <laughs> what are you asking? How cool would it be for me to migrate across the house and make pillow farts? I like Carl Sagan's pale blue dot perspective. We're insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but we have something good to fight for in our little times. In, in, for in our little sphere. Little sphere. So I will finish that entire conversation with one thing. <sighs> it is important in order for us to have a happy life to understand what we can't, what we can control and can't control, right? Like, okay, whatever, like, I'm, I'm no longer talking about NFTs, but kind of also, like, 
what we can't control and what we can control. I don't believe it's in my purpose as a human being here on this earth to tell other people how to live their lives. In fact, I'm sure we could all agree here right now that it fucking sucks when people try to tell you how to live your life, right? Most of the time, it has no impact on them whatsoever. They want you to look a certain way, date a certain person, like live a certain lifestyle, buy, buy certain things. Like, I don't think it's my it's my job on this earth, and it's not most of our jobs here on this earth to tell people how to live. And not just that, but it's also a foolish attempt. If you spend all of your day worried about what other people are doing, you're not actually making a difference, but you're not making normally a difference in the collective. You're just making a difference in your own life. And normally it's a negative difference, right? You're worried about how people vote. You're worried about how people eat, how they sell their art, right? That is a horrible way to spend your time, in my opinion. So be cognizant of that, right? Um... Try to focus on things you can control. You know what you can control? You can control if you inspire people and if you lead by example. If your example is good, you know? Um, and just make them want to... Make them want to, to be more like what your ideals are by showing them how, how wonderful life can be with your ideals. You know? Instead of spending all this freaking time fighting people on the internet or boycotting them or whatever, like... Okay, some people deserve to be boycotted. Uh, <laughs> but, like, focus on your own life and what you can bring to the table more than what you can take off people's tables, you know what I mean? Tina, thank you, I appreciate it. Happy New Year to you too. Pretty printing model with hollow. So I hollow out my model in a software called Cheeto Box, which is what came with my printer. So in, in Cheeto Box, there's this literally this button that automatically hollows it for you. You don't have to do anything. Did you see how humans are the only ones that have sweat glands in most of their body? This allowed us to outpace fast animals over a long period of time. Yeah, that's what, that was our like main hunting strategy was just like fucking walk <laughs> just walk in the, the general direction that they were running in and eventually get there you know marvelous yeah i love marvelous you sound like my mom talking to me i'm sorry i got mom vibes today i come in here with the mom vibes <laughs> If respect, take respect, yeah. I don't know. I, I just have a lot of things that I feel very strongly about. Uh, it all, like, that whole, like, control thing. Hey, Sparkles, what are you doing? What are you doing? Squeaking? Can you guys hear him squeaking? Why are you talking like that? Okay. Can't be talking? <laughs> yeah. He's just- he has a lot of strong opinions on this. Um... Where was I? Oh yeah! This one's gonna... This one, you guys are gonna like this, sort of. So, um, when I was in college, I've told the story like 37 times on this channel. When I was in college, I had this director of the game department who was very particular about things. She did a lot for me. Uh, but I, I always remember this one incident. 
where um is he speaking english <laughs> um where she made us design business cards and whenever we designed the business cards she was like these are unprofessional because they got pictures and stuff and you just need to put in your your um names um call it cap the capital letters of your name what did you call it? your initials you don't need to put in your initials in your website and whatever you're done but like she told us like if people saw your cute little business card with a picture of your art on it or maybe a logo that you made and you're happy with like you were never gonna get a job she was like 100 she had like 100 um uh what do you call it when somebody like no like is for sure they, they're so sure what they say um there was a c conviction 100 conviction of Nobody will give you a job if you don't have this particular business card design. And I was like, okay, beat down, um, beat down, you know, like, so I go home and I change my business card and I come back and it's like a boring business card. And she's like, this is much better. Then I left that and that left an impression on me. And I was like, oh, I guess there must be one right way to do everything. But then a few months later, I was like, would that really have mattered? Would having a picture of my art on my business card have blocked my entire... Would I be homeless right now if I had a picture on my business card of my art? I, I have business cards now that have pictures of my art on them. Like, I think it's really freaking cool to put in like a portfolio piece on the back and then the information on the front. I wish I had one to show you guys, but I haven't seen them around in a long time. I lost them in the move. I haven't been outside the house to give anybody business cards in like a billion years, so... Oh, this could be a business card box. Let's see. Oh no, this is from my old job. It is business cards, but not the right ones. I'm looking at my drawers. Anyway, the point is, the point is, is that I wouldn't be homeless and my career wouldn't be dead. Then I started realizing that that applied to a lot of things and that the world can be a lot less black and white than some people think, right? You can fail upwards. You can succeed downwards. You can get lucky, meet somebody and boom your career is made or you can have it do everything right and your career is not made right isn't that weird to think about um anyway <laughs> I forgot what the point was i got distracted with the business card thing oh yeah this is why i don't believe in forcing people or telling them what to do because i don't know the future right Right? I don't know the future. She thought she knew the future whenever she said that. She was like, if you put your picture on your business card, you're never going to get a future. Like, that's that's somebody who knows thinks they know the future. Through projection, whatever. Right? Maybe something bad happened to her. Um, but I don't know the future, and nobody does. And if somebody... FYI, this is probably my last piece of advice for the day. If you ever meet somebody who tells you that there's only one right way to do something, be it in art, be it in, um, be it in career stuff, or even non-career stuff, they say there's only one right way and they happen to know the one right way, like, take that with a grain of salt. There's no one right way to do most things. Um, like, like, know that there's options and actually thinking that there's only one right way to do things is like a huge freaking problem that I see in my students. They're like, oh, I don't know the exact right way to do this. So I'm stuck and frozen in place because I don't know how to move forward. I'm like, there's no, there's not necessarily one right way to do things. Like, you know, this happens a lot with hair cards. <laughs> Like, there's a billion ways to do hair cards, you know? What and matters in the end is if the hair looks good and if it's performant. <sighs> I 
This is not a dinosaur. People who speak entirely in absolutes are generally are just unhappy it hasn't worked for them yet. Oh my god, the tail. I just realized. <laughs> oh god, I gotta fix that. I wish there was one, one right way. Seems like more distressing when there's 20 ways to do a thing like the zebra surrendering. That's because you're getting frozen by the thought of it. Next stream, I think I'm gonna do speed sculpts because these kind of, you know, when I'm talking, it takes too long. Speed sculpts get me in the zone better. Get it more organic. I'm going to spend the last few minutes of my stream sharing with you the links for my social medias. Uh, the social media is the best way to get a hold of me in case you have a question or want to talk. Um, send me a DM. Uh, you can keep up to date with my artwork, my free content, my tutorials, my announcements, and things like that, my schedule. All right. I have a new YouTube channel that has uh, new tutorials that are all like ZBrush tips and tricks and basics and things like that. It's really cool. So make sure to go subscribe to it and go watch the videos if you're interested or just hang on until the next ones come around. The link's right there. Um, you can join my Discord server, which is a place where hundreds of professional and um, aspiring 3D artists hang out. We hang out, we do tips and tricks, we share tips and tricks, you can share your work, you can get feedback, you can give feedback, make friends, um, and just be part of the inner circle. It's a great way to network. Let's see. I do a workshop and mentorship program. So the workshop is a workshop that I do every Wednesday. We do, Over the course of a month, we go through one topic and we sculpt it into a portfolio piece from, from scratch on the first week to the final thing in render on the fourth or fifth week, depending on how long the month is. Uh, it's really neat. It's like a class setting with a bunch of other 3D artists. It's really friendly and nice. You get access to all my tutorials early. You get access to a party that I throw every month that we like hang out at, like in Discord, and a bunch of other cool things. Okay. Um, for the mentorship program, it's basically a one-on-one -on -one, like coaching where I'll we will talk about your exact goals, where you are, where you want to be. It could be getting your first job, it could just be getting better, starting freelancing, getting a promotion, getting noticed, whatever it is that you want. We'll talk about it, we'll talk about where you are compared to your goals, we'll talk about how we can align with your goals, where your strengths and weaknesses are, what to work on next. I even help decide what should be on your portfolio, what shouldn't be on your portfolio. I do critiques so you can send me your artwork at any time and I'll critique it. And all this other stuff. I do like resume critiques, portfolio critiques, cover letter critiques, like everything. Like every, like it's all around like 360 career support from me. So make sure to check out the links if you'd like. All right. Um, and I believe that's it. Um, I love your Yeti and Sasquatch. Thank you. 
Any course in art station you need any, any other websites? Not yet, Katar. Uh, Kataria, so not yet. I plan on making them this year. I've just been busy with other stuff. I have a lot of projects going on, you know. Um, but I do plan on doing a ZBrush for Beginners course, then a Retopology course, then, you know, going from there. It will be uh, probably on... I haven't decided what website to host it in. You know, it could be Udemy, it could be ArtStation, it could be all of them, honestly. But I, I plan on doing... Uh, pre-recorded courses and then like courses with help like one-on-one -on -one guidance so we'll see how that goes all righty guys so all my links are there all right so uh please have a great day i hope this stream was fun inspiring helpful or all of the above make sure to follow the pixelogic channels all right a bunch of very talented amazing 10 out of 10 artists stream here i love watching them you should too and yeah, let's go. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.